Welcome everyone. In this video I'll show you an update on my project to coach paint my AC2 litre as part of its full restoration. I had started to paint it the AC two years ago in 2021 but this was delayed until the late summer of that year while I went through three paint supplies before I could get the colour I wanted. Since then the engine work took over. With a huge delay now awaiting the new crankshaft I have had to return to the painting, albeit with engine parts cluttering my workspaces. I wasn't happy with the results I got in 2021, coach painting the bonnet and boot lid. The small hatch for the spare wheel looked quite good, as did these little panels for the front wings. But it is easier to do small areas where you can concentrate on perfection and lay the panel flat for the paint to level under gravity. For this late 2023 update I am redoing the top coats or base coats and the final clear coats on the bonnet and boot lid. I'll also be doing a bit more on the doors. I'll give a quick recap on what goes on to the metal initially. These panels are aluminium alloy. Aluminium always has a tough clear coating of aluminium oxide. This is not to be confused with the white powdery type of corrosion. The clear oxide makes it harder to get paint to stick. The aerospace industry traditionally used some hazardous and expensive chemicals prior to painting. For car restorers it is usual to apply an etch primer. You can remove the oxide by sanding the metal but the oxide starts re to return straight away. It is worth creating a slightly matte surface for the paint to hold onto. The etch primer contains acid to etch itself onto the alloy. Etch primer is cellulose based which means you need cellulose thinners to clean the brushes. Note that it is very smelly and I always use it outdoors. After a couple of coats of the etch primer I apply, I apply a light grey high build primer undercoat branded as Tractol. A day later a second coat. The next day it needs to be rubbed down until smooth. This is where I was making some mistakes back in 2021. I applied it in warm weather but even in cool weather this undercoat needs thinning. The result was very deep brush, brush marks requiring some coarse sanding. If it goes on thinner and smoother I can rub it down smooth with 280 grit followed by 400 grit. This is done mostly wet. The water makes it hard to see details on the paint surface so I do the finishing touches dry. It is essential to get the surface absolutely perfect before any top coats go on. I spent at least five hours rubbing down a door, or three hours on each bonnet half. It must be perfect. I've tried a long sanding block, although it tended to get stuck from the vacuum when wet. A small block is easier to do near edges. Fine details and edges are best done with my fingers. It is all too easy to sand through to bare metal if there is a slight crease in the panel. I apply a third coat, well thinned if I've gone through to bare metal in a lot of spots, then more rubbing down the next day. Then we come to the serious business of applying the colour. I have to thank Avenue Paints for getting the colour correct for me. Their version of the discontinued Tecaloid brand is much better than another version I originally tried. After a two year break the quarterfall tin I opened had no skin or hardening and only needed a slight stir. Therefore no filtering is needed, which I really hated to do previously. Coach painters seem divided between preferring the British made Hamilton Perfection brush or the American Purdy. I use both. My only problem is keeping them clean, at least for the large brushes, and they often lose their springiness. I later learned that one can get a vapour box to place them in. Rather than cleaning them, you store them in the vapour box ready to use with the same paint in the future. Make sure your brushes are listed as suitable for vapour boxes. I also bought some inexpensive brushes of Avenue's own brand, only to find that I can coach paint better with these synthetic bristle brushes. They clean very easily and are nice and springy and soft. I think each coat painter has find their own preferences so it's a case of trial and error and whatever works for you. However, these Avenue brushes are not suitable for vapour boxes, but since they clean easily, this doesn't matter. Now to return to the main plot, as I revived my painting project in August 2023. Firstly, to tackle the top side of each bonnet half. 
The surface was far from smooth enough, so I got to work with 400 grit wet and dry paper. I did the finishing touches without water so that I could see each dark patch which represents a low spot. I made sure that every such tiny defect was removed. The two corners next to the hinge are slightly distorted from the original manufacture and I needed to sand these carefully without a block. I also wasn't satisfied with cleaning the paint dust off with damp paper. I have this frost branded pre-paint cleaner that I use for the final clean of bare metal before priming. I tried using it on the sanded paint and it does not seem to damage it. It gets it much cleaner. The technique is to apply paint to a fairly small area, working it in at least two directions. Having covered a small rectangular area, you then lay off the brush marks. Brush over the area gently in one direction and then very lightly at 90 degrees to the first laying off. That reduces the brush marks and over the next few minutes the paint should level a bit more, hopefully. An important point is always to maintain a wet edge. That is, after laying off one small area, the edge still needs to be wet enough to merge into the next small area. Coach paint is formulated to help achieve this. You have to decide how large an area you can do while keeping that wet edge. When laying off the next section, I brush towards the previous section and lift the brush off gradually, like an aircraft taking off. I'll leave the top coat for at least two days before rubbing down. I use either 400 or 600 grit applied wet. As before, the finishing touches were done dry. It's always annoying when I sand through to the undercoat when I'd hoped I'd done the final coat of green. More coats can help the overall finish, but stories of huge numbers of coats can be misleading. You don't need very large numbers of coats provided that they are applied well. Three top coats might be sufficient. When the green is looking good, it's time to add some clear coat. I use Craftmaster Clear, which is guaranteed not to yellow and should protect the green paint from fading. It can't be thinned, but you can get some PPA additive which helps it flow, especially in warm weather. Talking of weather, it is advisable to coach paint when the prevailing air temperature is below about 20 degrees C or 68 Fahrenheit. I applied this clear coat using uh, my favourite Avenue brushes. I found that the uh, clear coat does not require much laying off, at least when working on a horizontal surface. It is very prone to sagging and you have to avoid applying too much on vertical or sloping surfaces. In fact, sagging has been a persistent problem even on the most gentle of slopes.
you can just about see my final laying off strokes across the width are still visible. It has not fully levelled. I'll leave it for now as it is much better to, than before and it's easy to return to later. I then moved on to the boot lid. I only needed to sand down the two year old clear coat and redo the clear. At first it sagged upwards and downwards, so for the final coat I propped it up to encourage it to sag downwards only. In the event it also sagged to the right as the whole lid has a compound curve. As with the bonnet I decided to leave it for now as it's a big improvement if not quite perfect. The right hand door is sporting the incorrect shade of green. This is one of the incorrect colours from when I was battling to get the shade to my liking. I had applied it to the door to make use of it, intending to overcoat it with the right green. On reflection this might upset the final colour. As the undercoat was uneven I decided to make use of this wrong green as a guide coat. That is, I'll sand it down to reveal the high and low areas. Then apply some of the correct green. As you can see, space in my workshop is rather limited. The next day I noticed some problem areas. The paint had sagged on the top edge and on the door pocket. These are areas that normally face upwards, reflecting the sky, and tend to emphasise any defects. The answer seems simple. Stand the door upright for its next coat. Most of the advice on coach painting refers to doing vertical surfaces, probably because coach painting is often done on the side of canal boats, vintage buses and railway rolling stock. should have predicted the results. Those upward facing surfaces were much improved but the main area have brush marks. More hours of sanding followed. I was listening to an interview of a former painter of Bristol cars who had a great reputation for dust free finishes. He revealed one of his secrets. He connected an earth wire to the body shell since all the rubbing down creates some static. Credit goes to John Drew and you can see his interview on the Bristol Owners Heritage Trust YouTube channel. So, time to make my painter's earth wire. Here it is attached to the door, ready for another coat of green. to the lengthy chore of rubbing down. I was extra careful to avoid rubbing through the green, only to fail. On most of the panels I keep finding tiny amounts of damage which are only noticeable with, with the deep loss of this coach paint. These uneven bits are where it's easy to rub through. Rather than do more coats and probably rub through again, I decided to touch it up. The paint tin was almost empty, hence I broke the rules and fed the brush straight from the tin. I also took the opportunity to apply paint to the front edge to use up the paint. My workshop is too cramped to paint the whole door all at once. Meanwhile, there are the door hinges to consider. 
These are partly painted and partly plated. Being brass, paint does not stick easily, so etch primer is essential. Next day I carefully sanded the touching up to blend in the edges. Oops, it's still not fully dry. I'll leave for another day. Time to apply some clear coat. I'll try it without the PPA additive this time as the air temperature is down to 17 degrees C. I can see a couple of small strips where it has not fully covered. I've had that problem before, usually when the paint or varnish is not thin enough and maybe I didn't brush it on hard enough. Returning to see how this clear coat turned out brings both good and bad news. The bad news is that there's a large sagging where the door pocket slopes. That small area that I touched up looks a bit messy if you look closely. The good news is that the coat has levelled well with those blemishes mentioned earlier having almost vanished. Also very little dust or bubbles. Maybe mixing in the PPA additive also adds bubbles. The day after applying, I cut away the thicker bits of sagging with a sharp craft knife. I will leave that for at least two days before rubbing down. Meanwhile, I had been working on the right hand door surround. The previous painting from 2021 had not levelled well. The colour was also slightly off, so maybe I failed to stir the paint enough. After rubbing down again with the 600 grit, I applied some fresh green paint. It was October 2023 by this time, and I was worried about flies getting in on the act. I need not have worried. Instead, we had ashes floating down, presumably from crop burning. Off camera I hastily applied a green coat and out on the driveway and then rolled the car into the garage. This is the view a day later. Not too bad. Hinges and screw heads also painted. The colour shade looks okay now. Back to the door and I very carefully rubbed down that long stretch of sagging, being careful not to rub through the green paint. Off camera I applied another clear coat and while that dries, I applied another coat of green to the right hand door surround. Off camera, I also painted the edges of the left hand door, which is still on the car. Here's the provisionally finished door. There is less sagging than before. But 
rather annoyingly there's a rough patch just here. These are streaky gaps in the coating. Maybe I didn't get the surface clean enough. I'll leave that for winter and concentrate on the left hand door before the autumn weather sets in. Hopefully I can complete the car's repaint in late spring or early summer 2024. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me for my next video soon.